In the previous video, we took a look at some of the basic steps you have to do to set up your system to run uh, the installation program for Release 12 on your Linux environment. Looks like we have most of those pieces down, so now we're actually in the installation program, and we're going to start walking through the wizard. For the most part, the wizard is pretty simple, especially compared to older versions of the Oracle eBusiness Suite, where you really had to do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. We are going to run into some problems, because as I mentioned in the previous video, this is a plain vanilla installation of uh, Oracle Linux 5.5, and there's a couple of things that we're going to have to do before we can get the eBusiness Suite up and running. But it's nice enough that we can um, do those things, we can hop out of the installation program, do the things that we need to, and then continue the installation program to move forward. So this is the first screen that we see, Install uh, Oracle Applications, and it breaks down all the things that it's going to install for us. If you're interested in seeing all the different pieces, you can see here's uh, exactly what it's going to install the uh, Oracle uh, Release 11 RDBMS, fresh database, we're going to have the option to specify these different pieces, the technology pack, all of the things that make up uh, the eBusiness Suite. You can install these different pieces on different servers if you want. Uh, if you really want to be in a scalable environment, you can have your database on one server, you can have the applications piece on another server. Uh, it gives you the flexibility to kind of scale your environment, set up security policies for your environment a lot differently. Uh, for this example, we're going to install everything on the same node. We're going to keep it as simple as possible. So uh, in, as we get to each one of these pieces, it'll prompt us to say, okay, where do you want to install this stuff? And we're going to do it all locally on this, on this one machine. Clicking Next, it'll say, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to install a fresh release of 12.1, or do you want to upgrade an existing release to 12.1.1? You can't upgrade every version of the Oracle eBusiness Suite to 12.1.1. Uh, the only ones that you can make the jump on is versions 11.5.9 or higher. Those can go directly to 12.1 of the eBusiness the e Suite. Any version of the eBusiness Suite before that has to be upgraded to 11.5.9 or 11.5.10, and then it's a second step to go to 12.1.1. We could use the Express install, but I'm purposely not going to choose that because I want, I want everybody to see all the different options that are available to us as we go through and we do the installation. If you're registered with Oracle, you can put in your email and your Oracle support password so that you'll automatically get information about security updates. Since this is just a demonstration, I'm going to just run it locally on my machine. I'm not going to sign up for anything. Configuration files are really important to the eBusiness Suite. It maintains all the different pieces that have been installed on your system. Uh, if you have an existing setup, you can certainly load the saved configuration. It'll have all of that information for you, and Oracle won't prompt you for as many questions. Since this is a fresh install on a brand new server, we obviously want to create a new configuration. And you can see that the following uh, the saved configuration files are in this format, where it's server name, SID name, port name for your database. And uh, that's the file and the configuration file it's going to create when we go through the steps to do that. Some of the global system settings, you can change the ports around. Uh, since Oracle is going to use a lot of different ports to communicate with all the different pieces of the software. So you see you have stuff like database port, SSL port, uh, different versions for the web listener. The forms are going to be running on a different port. Fulfillment services, MCA. And again, a lot of these things you may not even care about because you don't have those things licensed for your environment. But you can go through here and you can change all of the ports around if you need to. Or uh, some people automatically change the default port values just as a security measure. You know, the Oracle database port always defaults to 1521. Well, even though uh, it's very secure and nobody's successfully you know, been able to hack that, it still makes some people nervous saying, well, every database in the world practically is running on 1521. We're going to change the port number to slow hackers down. You can certainly do something like that uh, for any of the ports here. Or if you have uh, physical requirements that won't allow you to use certain ports. You can then save the ports in what's called a port pool. Uh, so if you have different uh, configurations, if you have maybe one server uh, that's going to have a development and a test environment on it, you can define these different port pools so that when it comes time to install another version of the eBusiness Suite, you can just uh, 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 select the port pool and it will automatically do all that stuff for you. Again, since this is a brand new installation, I don't have any limitations on ports. I'm just going to take the default values, select Next. 
database node again here's where I can start picking do I want this to be uh, installed on this particular server do I want it to be installed on a different server uh, do I want to break this up do I want to uh, have uh, some kind of other environment again this is going to be real simple we're going to just install everything on the same machine and the database type Oracle comes with this demonstration called the vision uh, demo database and this installs all of the major pieces and gives you an, an idea of how to set up all of the different pieces that go along with the eBusiness suite. So you can go in there and look at the functionality and, and test things around. If I didn't want to do the vision, if I was obviously going to do this uh, for a production environment or even like a test environment that's going to mimic my organization, I would want to do it from a fresh database. Won't have any seed data for uh, all of the setups that you have to do. For this example, I'm going to pick the vision demo database. You can change the SID around, but that's kind of the standard standard SID that goes along with this. The host name, this is, I'm going to fully qualify my host here. Um, you can see that, oh, I don't have to qualify it because on the domain line below it is where it's fully qualified. My host name is called ebs.fourthmonth.com. So the host name is EBS. There's my domain name. It's automatically figured out which operating system I'm running on. Here's my Oracle database user. Here's the group that I set up. And here's my, going to be my base directory. I actually don't want that to be my base directory. I don't have a D01 mount point. I set up that other, uh, in the previous video, I set up that other directory uh, under my Oracle home directory, and that's the one that I want to use as my base directory. So if I click on Browse, eventually this should come back and say, I don't want it to be there. I want it to be Home, Oracle, EBS. That's what I want my base directory to be. Here's my applications node. Again, this can be on a different server if I want to have a, a true end-tier environment. Again, I'm going to put this just on the, all on the same server. So it's EBS, fourthmonth.com, operating system, uh, the applications OS user, who's going to own this. I don't want it to be Oracle. This is where I set up Apple Manager. So I'm going to make him Apple Manager. The group is also Apple Manager. Base directory, you can see it grabbed from the previous screen, home, uh, Oracle, EBS. The instance directory, where it's going to put everything, home, Oracle, EBS, INST. So double check just to make sure, okay, is this everything that I set up properly? The node name, the operating system, does that make sense? Do I want to have more servers? Do I want to cluster these things together? Maybe I want to have a couple of applications node that I'm clustering together to keep things simple. Again, I'm not going to do that. If I need to change any of the stuff around, I can click the edit buttons here or the delete buttons. Right now, the delete buttons are ghosted out because I obviously have to have at least one database node and one apps node. If I wanted to add more stuff, I could add those things here and then I'd have the ability to go in there and either change them around or delete them. But again, since it's just a simple install, I'm going to keep it that way. One of the things that Oracle has really worked hard on is making sure that the system checks that go be before you actually try to start doing any of the installations are really, really thorough. Uh, in previous versions of the eBusiness Suite, when you tried to install, you'd get like 90% or 95% of the way through an install, and then everything would crash because you were missing some essential piece. Oracle has really worked hard at making sure that uh, the prerequisite checks are really thorough to make sure that everything is in place uh, so that you can move forward. So you don't get halfway or three quarters or seven eighths through an install and find out that you know nothing's working properly. Again, because this is a plain vanilla install of the eBusiness Suite we're pro uh, of the uh, Oracle Linux server, uh, we're probably going to get some errors here that we're going to have to go through and make some changes to before we'll be allowed to uh, complete our installation. So you can see that I do have a couple of problems here. Uh, the ports all look good. The file systems all look good. Uh, I got an issue here with file space. So if I click on that, it doesn't look like I'm going to have enough free space on the system. I'm going to have to go through and increase the disk space on my system before I can, uh, I'll have enough room to install all the different pieces that are out there. I also have this OS user and group check problem. I can click on that and it will give me information about all of the different pieces. So you can see that Oracle does not belong to the group Apple Manager. Please check your inputs. So it's saying that the Oracle database user has to be part of that application tier group uh, before it will let me continue. So I can click on OK here, click on System, we can go back to the administration, users and groups. And it's a real easy thing to do. I can say, you know what, for Oracle, not only do I want him to be part of that, I also want him to be part of the Apple Manager group. So 
The DBA is still his primary group, but the Oracle user is now also part of the Apple Manager group. So if I click on Quit and I do Retry, I'm still going to have this problem with the file space, but when it goes through, it should be able to say that the OS uh, check is OK. So I paused and restarted the video so you didn't have to sit through all of the different checks. But you can see that this time the OS and user group check came back OK. But I still have some file space issues. So I'm going to have to straighten that out before I can continue on. That ends this video. We're going to look at part three at fixing some of the error messages and then continuing on with the installation.